Hello and welcome to the lesson. So today we're going to learn how to play Sultans of Swing by Dire Straits. I've been looking forward to teaching this lesson because it is a classic electric guitar piece. As I'm sure you're aware, it's got some great solos in it. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you all the chords and all the solos. So we've got quite a lot to get through. By the way, Martin Offler doesn't use a plectrum, he uses his fingers to play everything. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in this lesson. So enough talking, let's begin. The first thing I wanna show you is the chords to the verse. So we're gonna cover all the chords and then in a minute, I'm gonna show you the strumming patterns and then later on, I'm gonna show you the solos. So we're gonna use bar chords because that's what Martin Offler does. Um, and the root chord for this song is D minor. So use your first finger to play a bar at fret five, just holding across five strings, Not we don't need the sixth string and um, put your middle finger on the second string at fret six your third finger on the fourth string at fret seven and the little finger right next to it on the third string at fret seven so that is a d minor and we're going to strum the five strings and it should sound like that and you can check you can always check the chord box next to me if you just want to pause the video and make sure you got it right so with the d minor we're going to play a bar and what that is is four beats so just for the minute just strum four strums like this and then in a minute i'll show you how to do the the proper strumming pattern now we're going to move the bar down to fret three and we're going to do what's called a c chord and the way we're going to do that is using our third finger to play a mini bar holding the fourth third and second string down at fret five it can be a bit tricky and you can use your little finger if you want to whatever's most comfortable now we're just going to do half a bar of c and what that means is just two beats instead of four i hope that makes sense <laughs> Again, just strumming five strings downwards. Now move down two more frets. So the bar's at fret one, but we're still gonna use a mini bar exactly in the same way as we just did. And this is called A sharp. And we just want two strums for, for half a bar there. Now we're gonna finish up on an A chord, and you probably know an A already, um, but it's the fourth string at fret two with the first finger, the middle finger on the third string at fret two, and then the third finger on the second string at fret two. And again, it's just the five strings, we're not using the sixth string. But for the A, we're gonna do two bars, but what I'm gonna ask you to do is do one bar of A, remember it's four strums in a bar, and then we're gonna put the little finger onto the first string at fret three, and this turns it into an A7, and you can do the second bar of A7. Excellent. So let me demonstrate what we've done so far. We've got one bar of D minor in slow motion. Half a bar of C. Half a bar of A sharp. And then a full bar of A. And a full bar of A7. Feel free to pause the video if you need to practice each bit. So once we've done those uh, sequence of chords twice, we're gonna move on to an F chord. And an F is a bar at fret one, and this time we're using all the strings, including the sixth string. And your middle finger goes on the third string at fret two. Your third finger goes onto the fifth string at fret three, and your little finger goes onto the fourth string at fret three. So with the F, we wanna do two bars. So that means a total of eight strums, like this. Excellent. Right, now we're going to move on to the C. This is the same as the chord we did earlier, bar at fret three, and the other finger laying across strings four, three, and two, making a mini bar at fret five. And we're going to do two bars of C, so eight strums. Excellent. Now move this down to a A sharp, the same as before, um, two bars. And now we're gonna go back to D minor. And what we're doing there is a bar plus one more beat. So what that means is five beats, okay? I hope that makes sense. And then we're gonna do this. All right, I'm sure you recognize that bit. So what that is, is the A sharp chord. And I'm gonna ask you to use your fingers to pluck strings five, four, three, and two. And we're gonna basically pluck them three times like that and then pluck them again but when you pluck them this time you're going to slide the chord up to a C and it's going to sound like this okay that's quite tricky so it'll take a bit of practice and once you're on the C just pluck it once more 
So it should sound like this. Alright, okay, well well done for getting that far. So now, now that you've learned the chords from the verse, the next thing I want to do is show you some strumming patterns to make it sound cool. Because you've probably noticed that Mark Knopfler doesn't play Salt and Swing like this. Right, he plays it more like this. So let me introduce you to this strumming pattern. So if we start with the D minor, the first chord of the song, here's what I want you to do. Use your thumb to pluck the fifth string, which is held down by your first finger, of course. And then use the fingers to strum all the strings. Well, I'm, when I say all the strings, I mean the five strings. So it's going to sound like this. And then use the fingers to strum up quite gently and then up again and then down and then up. So look at the arrows at the bottom of the screen to see exactly what I've done. So it should sound like this. And that's actually the strumming pattern that Dire Straits use on the intro of the song when it starts. So I'm going to have to leave it up to you to practice that on all those chords all the way through the verse. I'll give you a quick demonstration and then I want to show you a different strumming pattern. So it's going to sound like this um, in slow motion. <laughs> And then, okay, so, so that's the end of the verse section. And it sounds a lot more interesting, doesn't it, using that strumming pattern. But let me show you another strumming pattern. So you've got a choice of mixing the two together. Try this one. This is basically what we did in the free 12 part course. Down, up, chop, up. So let me explain that. I'm gently using my thumb just to strum down through the strings quite gently use the fingers to strum up and then give it a little chop. If you remember from the chorus, that's when you strike the strings with your nails, but you're touching the strings with the palm of your hand. And if you practice it, it, it creates a dead sound like that because you're muting the strings. So what we're going to do is down, up, chop, up. And you do it twice for, for a bar. So it would be like this. Okay, so if we use this pattern, it will sound like this. All right, so that's an example of playing the verse with that other strumming pattern. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to combine them and I want you to experiment. I want you to try using both. So let me give you an example of me combining both those strumming patterns. And to be honest, I don't really know when I'm gonna do either one. I'm just gonna do it whenever I feel like it. So see if you can spot which one I'm doing on each chord as I change. Here goes. <laughs> You can see what I'm doing. So basically, the moral of the story is this. You should be able to be comfortable strumming and you should be able to vary it and change it without being too rigid and without sticking too strictly to a strumming pattern. And that's what I want you to be able to do, okay? I want it to be nice and smooth and for, for it to be able to flow. So that's your challenge, that's your task. So now I want to show you that famous um, Salt of Swing chorus riff that goes like this. <laughs> All 
All right. So um, what it is, is the third string at fret seven and the middle finger on the second string at fret eight. Give them both a pluck and then pluck them again. And now go off to the third and second string, both at fret five, like that. And now we're going to go to the fourth string at fret eight and the middle finger on the third string at fret seven. Give them both a pluck. So that should sound like this. And then you're going to go um, the fourth and third string, both at fret 10. Pluck them twice. And now you're going to change it slightly. So the fourth string's at fret 10, but the middle finger goes onto the third string at fret 9. And you're going to pluck those twice. Excellent. Now you're going to do a bit of a slide. So what that is, we're going to play the third and the second string, both at fret 10, but you can slide up. You can see I'm using my third finger. And once you get there, give them another pluck. And then step down onto the third string at nine and the middle finger on the second string at eight. So if we join that whole thing together, I know I'm moving quickly, but you know, it should sound like this. There you go. Now do it again. Instead of doing the slide, we're going to do this. So you're going to slide the fifth string up to fret seven, and then play the fourth string at fret five, and then the fourth string at fret seven, and then the third string at fret five. So it'll sound like that. So the first time you do the chorus, you do this bit on the end, and then the second time you do it, instead of doing that, you do this. There you go. Right, I think it's time we did a bit of lead because we basically covered the main chords from the song. Um, what I want to show you now is all the lead parts that Martin Othra does. Um, starting with the intro. Oh, and by the way, the intro of the song is eight bars of D minor using the first strumming pattern like this. <laughs> That's the intro chords, really simple. And over the top, Martin Offler is doing this. From this point forward, I'm gonna move quite quickly and I'm probably gonna only have time to explain everything once. So you can, you can pause the video if you need to. So he does this. So the next thing I want to show you is the big solo that he does, the first big solo. And it's going to sound like this. just so you know where we are because I've zoomed the camera right in on the neck this fret here is fret 12 so on most guitars there's usually two dots on fret 12 I just wanted to check you knew where we are okay so let's learn this first riff that's the third string at fret 12 bend it and then bend it three more times and then hammer the fret 10 on the third string onto fret 12 and back off pull back off again like that. And then hammer fret 9 onto fret 10 and pull back off. Excellent. And then the next bit. That's a harmonic. And what a harmonic is, is you're touching the fourth string at fret 7 very gently and you just give it a pluck. And that creates a harmonic. Do the same on the fifth string at fret 7. You might have to practice that a little bit. And then the little finger goes on the fifth string at fret 12, fourth string at fret 11. 3rd string at fret 9, middle finger on the 2nd string at 10, and then the 1st string at 9. Good. And then bend the 1st string at 12, up and down, like that. Then lay your 1st finger flat across the 3 strings at fret 10. So pluck the 1st, 2nd and 3rd string. And then play the 4th string at fret 12. 
Excellent. The next bit goes like this. So that's the second string at 10, then 13. And then hammer the second string from 11 on to 13 and pull off again. And then hammer the second string at 9 on to 10. Good. And then pluck the second string at 11 quite sharply. Just by releasing it quite quickly. And then hammer 9 on to 10 again. And then play the fourth string at fret 11. Good. All right. Pause the video if you need to. The next bit goes like this. So what I'm doing is bending the third string at 12 and then putting the little finger on the second string at fret 13. And then bend it again, but this time lay the little finger flat across the strings one and two. So pluck the first then second string. And then pluck the third string and release the bend. And then play the third string at fret 10 twice. Good. Next riff goes like this. That's a slide up onto the first string at 13. And then off to fret 12. And then second string at 13. And then the third string at 12. Onto the third string at 14. Back off to 12. And then the second string at 13 twice. Good. Next riff. So what I'm doing there is bending the second string at 13, as you can probably see. Um, bend once and then bend up and down, like that. And then off onto the second string at 11, and then bend it twice again on 13. Pause the video if you need to. Good. Um, the next bit goes. That's a really cool riff, that. Um, I'm laying my first finger flat across strings one and two, both at fret 10. You're gonna pluck the second string, and then put the little finger on the first string at 13, give it a pluck and pull it off. So I'm pulling off because the first finger is already holding down fret 10. I hope that makes sense. Now pluck the second and the first string, still at fret 10. And then bend the second string at 13. Like that. Then play the second string at 10 and pluck it twice. Then the third string at 12. And then the third string at 10. Excellent. We're nearly at the end of this solo now, so I hope you've been pausing it and practicing each section. And by the way, this is a really advanced solo, so it's going to take you a lot of practice in order to get it sounding smooth. I don't for one minute expect you to be able to play it along with me and, and learn it perfectly straight away. It's just not going to happen, so take your time and watch the video several times if you need to. So the last little bit of this solo goes like this. So what that is, I'm laying my first finger across strings 4, 3 and 2 at fret 3. And, and pluck those strings, 4, 3, 2. And I put your little finger on the second string at fret 6. And then go back off to the second string at fret 3. And then we're going to go like this. So what I've done, I've moved my first finger up to fret 5. I'm still holding down strings 4, 3 and 2. And you're going to pluck them quite quickly and then play the middle finger on the second string at fret six, pluck it again and slide to eight. Go back to fret six, off to fret five on the second string, and then back onto fret six and slide to eight. Okay, good. Um, and now the next bit is very similar. It does the first thing the same, but this time it goes like this. So what you need to do is slide the third string from fret 3 to fret 5 and then play the fourth string at fret 5 and then the third string at fret 5 up onto fret 7 back off to fret 5 now bend the third string at 7 little finger on the second string at fret 8 and, and pluck the, the third string and release it off to fret 5 and finish up on fret 7 twice Okay, there you go. We've covered that solo very, very quickly, but all the tab is there, so you just need to practice each section and join it all together. There's no easy way around it, really. You know, you've just got to practice it. All right, excellent. So now I want to show you the second solo, which is the main solo, where they do that really fast riff. So we're going to do all that now. It's going to sound like this.
into the chorus. Alright, it's awesome, isn't it? It's, it's really an epic solo. Okay, so let's begin. So the first riff. And once again, I'm zoomed in on the guitar neck. This is fret 12 here. So we're going to start by bending the third string at fret 12. And then bend it up and down. And then play the third string at 10 and hammer on to 12 and pull off. And then put the little finger across onto the fifth string at fret 13. And then the next bit goes like this. So that's the third string at 12, bend it up and down. And then pluck it again. And now you're going to hammer from the third string at 9 on to 12 and then pull back off again. And then hammer from 7 onto 9 and back off. And then 5 onto 7 and back off. And now lay your first finger across strings 4 and 3. And what you're going to do is pluck both those strings, but hammer onto the fourth string at fret 7 and pull back off. And then play the fifth string, hammer from fret 5 onto 7 and back off. And then do the same, the fifth string at fret 3, hammer onto 5 and back off. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Just follow the tab at the bottom of the screen. Now the next bit goes like this. So what I'm doing is the second string at fret 10, and what you need to do is use your, th your third finger because you're going to pull off to fret 8 with your first finger, like this. Okay? And then play the third string at fret 10, and then the second at 8 again, and then go back onto the third string at 10, and then go down to the third string at 7. Okay, now here's where it gets interesting. It's going to go like this. Right, so what that is, I'm holding my first finger flat across strings 1 and 2, both at fret 8, and you're going to pluck the second string and hammer on to fret 10, like that, and then pull off. Now use your middle finger to play the third string at fret 9. Now leave those fingers there where they are, the middle finger on there and the first finger holding down flat across both strings, and I want you to pluck the first string at fret 8. Now put the other finger on the second string at 10, pluck it and pull off and then pluck the third string, which is already held down at fret 9. Now what I want you to do is repeat those last four notes six times in total. So let me just show you what I mean. Right, and finish on the first string at fret 10. I know it's quite complicated, but as I've said before, it's quite an advanced piece. Just pause the video and practice the tab for as long as you need to. The next riff is awesome. I love this riff. It goes like this. Right, so that's bending the third string at fret 12. Then put your first finger flat across strings 1 and 2 at fret 10. Pluck the second string, then the first string. Then put the little finger on the second string at 13 and give it a pluck and pull off to 10. Like that. Then play the third string at 12. Now pluck the third string at 12 again, but this time you're going to pull off to 10. And then play the fourth string at fret 12. Good. And now it goes... So that's the fourth string at 10, hammer on to 12. And then put your first finger flat across strings 3 and 2. And you're going to pluck the third and then the second string at 10. Hope that makes sense. And then play the third string at fret 12. Okay, and now the next bit goes... Right, now what that is, we're going to use a little shape. Um, that's the middle finger on the fourth string at 10, and the first finger on the third string at 9, and the third finger on the second string at 10. And you're going to pluck those strings, 4, 3 and 2. And then put your little finger onto the second string at fret 11, and pluck those strings again. Okay, now bend the second string at fret 11 and put your little finger on the first string at fret 12. And now pluck the second string and release it. Good, and then finish on the first string at fret 10. And now this takes us into the main riff, that awesome, um, you know, bit that goes. Okay, I know that's the bit you've been waiting for, so here's how you do it. You lay your first finger across strings one and two, both at fret 10 and you put your little finger on the first string at fret 13. Now, you're going to use your thumb to pluck the first string and pull off the little finger. 
Now make sure you use your thumb to pluck that note, it's quite important. So it should sound like this. And now use your thumb to pluck the second string, which is already held down at fret 10. And now use your first finger to pluck the first string. Like that. So watch very carefully. So the thumb plucks the little finger, which pulls off. And then the thumb plucks the second string. Then the first finger plucks the first string. Now, if you do it like that, exactly how I've told you, it will flow smoothly. So make sure you do it exactly how I've said. So if you repeat that round four times, it'll sound like this. Now, keep your first finger there and put your middle finger onto the second string at fret 11. That's the only difference, and you're basically going to do the same thing again. Pulling the little finger off from fret 13. But the only difference is I did it three times, and then I finished with by just playing the first string up fret 13 with a little finger. Like I say, just look at the tab if, if, if you need to check that. So what we're going to do now is move this shape up. So the first finger is laying flat across strings 1 and 2 at fret 12. The middle finger now is on the second string at 13 and the little finger is on the first string at fret 15. So you're going to do the same pattern and the only difference is you're going to do it seven times. go that's the fast bit that's how you do it so just to demonstrate that through once more it's going to sound like this Now that's going to take a lot of practice, but you should be able to eventually speed it up to full speed. All right, I know it's easier said than done. And Mark Knopfler repeats that little bit round twice. And the solo finishes up um, with, a, with a few simple notes, and I'll show you them quickly. So that's the first string at fret 15 and you're going to bend it up and then bend it up and down and then play the first string at 13, hammer on to 15 and pull off like that and then finish up on the second string at fret 15 and now play the first string at 13 and then the second string at 13 and then bend the first string at 15 again back down and pluck it again at 15. And now you're going to do this. That's first string at 12, hammer on to 15 and pull off. And then the second string at 13, hammer on to 15 and off. And then the second string at 10, hammer on to 13, then off. And then the second string at 8, hammer on to 10 and off. And then the second string at 5, hammer on to 8 and off. And then the third string at five, hammer on to seven, and then off. There you go. Believe it or not, that is both of those entire solos that you've just learned. And it finishes by um, doing the chorus section that we learned earlier. Well, we've covered a lot of stuff there, and needless to say, it's going to take a lot of practice. You're going to have to watch this video several times, you're going to have to look at the PDF document, and it's got all the tab for all the solos, and it's got all the chords there. So I've given you all the information you need, it's now your responsibility and your job to go and practice it. So I hope you enjoy the process of learning this song and learning these solos, because I can assure you it's worth it in the end. When you can get that fast bit going full speed... It's really fun and it's going to be great when you can play it to people. So thanks for joining me in the lesson. Go and look at the PDF document and I've also put some extra bits of tab in there for some other riffs that Mark Knopfler does during the verse. So you can look at that as well if you want to. So thanks for joining me. Best of luck learning Sultans of Swing and I look forward to seeing you soon in one of the other video guitar lessons. Okay, bye-bye.